In this video, I will show you how to download and install all of the tools needed in Adduce Data Science modules. Not every module uses every tool, so please feel free to skip ahead to the tools that you will need. The first tools that we will go over are command line. Now, if you search on your computer for command line, or just command, you'll see that there is a pre-installed command prompt program. Unfortunately, this is a Windows-specific program that is not conducive to what the data science modules are using. In our modules, we use a Unix or Linux-based terminal, which you'll have to install. There are a number of Unix-based command line terminal programs which you could install. In our modules, we recommend using Git because some of our modules use the Git-specific language in order to complete version control. So when you install this terminal, you already get these functions automatically. To download this, we simply open our browser of choice, and if you search Git for Windows, and enter here, you'll see that the first thing is the download win, which should automatically start downloading when you open it. You can save this anywhere on your computer. I will save it to my desktop for easy use. And it's a relatively small program, so it downloads quickly. Once it's finished downloading, it's like any other installer. You simply double click and it will automatically open into the installer. Now, if you have security features on your computer like I do, it wants to make sure that I'm allowing this to access my computer, which I do. You, of course, always have the license agreement, which the first time you install any software, you should look over. I have installed it before, so I will just go to Next. I will leave it being installed into the normal Program Files folder, although if you have a different place you'd like to install it, feel free to change that. We leave the default options for all components. We allow it to be called Git. And then here we're actually going to change the default. When you have command line, you can edit text files. The default for Git is using Vim. But in order to be the same as all of our Mac users in, in the modules, we're going to switch this to use Nano Editor. We will again leave the defaults. and allow it to install. Once complete, we are not going to launch or view the release notes just yet. Now to open this program, we can search on our computer for Git. See that there are a number of Git programs that came installed but the one we're going to use is Git Bash. To make our lives easier, I'm also going to pin this to the taskbar for future use. So now we have it down here. When we open Git Bash, we simply have the terminal window. This is where we will type in and execute all of our command line commands and programs. The first one we're going to work with is Blast. Now to see if Blast is already installed on your computer, you can simply type blast n for nucleotide blast and hit enter. You see that it says the command is not found, meaning that blast is not yet installed on this computer. So we can go install it by simply searching for blast install. You see here the software database from NCBI, the number of instructions. And what's important for us here is that we want to use the latest BLAST version, so whatever is the most up-to-date version. There are a number of versions for different operating systems. And the ones we're interested in are the Windows executables. It's important that you use this EXE executable, not the tar GZ, as these tarred files are zipped but uncompiled, so they're not ready for install. So we can download our executable. We'll again, leave it on the desktop. Once it's finished downloading, you can double click to open the installer, which again, since I have security measures on my computer, it's gonna make sure I want to install a program. Agree to the license. I will leave it in its default program files location and we will install. Now, we need to restart our terminal, which I've already pinned here nicely. So now when we type blast n, hit return, 
This error is telling us that while it found BlastN, meaning it's installed and it's ready to use, we didn't give it any data like a database or sequences to actually run Blast on. So it couldn't complete BlastN, but this shows us that it's installed correctly. So that's all you need for your command line and Blast based modules. I will now show you the install of R and RStudio. It's important that you install R first. So we will search for R install. And we see here the R project main page. We'll go to CRAN, which is where you actually download. And you want to pick a CRAN mirror that's geographically near you. I'm in Vancouver, so I will pick Simon Fraser University. And then you'll want to install the Windows version. Since we're installing R for the first time, we want this base R version. Again to the desktop so I can find it easily. Once the download is complete, we double click to start the installer. We highly recommend that you leave the installation in English since all of our modules go through the commands in English. However, if you are very uncomfortable with this language, you can specify a different one, meaning that everything within R, so all of the buttons and all of the error messages, will be in the correct language. Accept the license. I will let it install in the default location. Please leave all of the defaults. And install. Once installation is complete, you now have the R program. So if we search for R, we see that this is not a very specific name for a program, so we actually don't find it. But you'll see if we go into wherever you've downloaded this, for me, it's within my program files here, see R, version 351, and everything for R. Now we're not going to use this as is. Um, this is termed base R. We're going to use the graphical user interface or GUI R Studio. So now we need to go download and install this. Search for R Studio download. And we'll see a number of versions and we simply want the free desktop version. Now you may be working on a laptop, but this is still considered a desktop version of the software. Importantly, you don't want to use the zip tarballs because they are the uncompiled versions. They are not ready for install. So you want to use here our Windows version. Once the download is complete, you can open the installer like all the others. See our security message pop up again, and then the installer. Leave all of the defaults for this one. Once install is complete, now we can find this program by simply typing R or R Studio, and you see the desktop. This will open up several panels that you see here on the left is what base R would look like. If you only see this left panel, you've probably opened regular base R instead of RStudio. Since we installed R first, RStudio automatically finds the version of R on our computer, which we see here. If you had an older version of R, you would see a different version number here. Just make sure for our modules that you have version 3.4 or newer. This is all of the downloaded install that you need for reduce modules, so we can clean up our desktop by deleting all of the installers. Thank you for viewing this tutorial, and please let your instructor know if you have any install issues. And please check out our website for our other data science tutorials and videos.